Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Bioshock. I'm very happy to be bringing this series. We just made it into the medical pavilion after uh, escaping a pretty good shootout in the middle of the uh, entryway, I guess you could call it, as we came in. And now we have to find our way into Neptune's Bounty. I always like their, their hacking system. I wonder how this will go playing it on PC now. There we go. I'm just gonna walk right into that pole. That's not necessarily going to be a good thing in this case. Dr. Steinman is a name that we are going to be very familiar with. Keep away. Okay. Come on. Thank you. I need to try and see if I can't turn up the sensitivity maybe, because it's taking me like, I have to lift my wrist in order to That'll work. You're right there. Okay, there we go. So, Diane McClintock is the wife of Andrew Ryan. And she was attacked on New Year's. And after the scar tissue from her attack, she has to go see Dr. Steinman. And this is not going to be a good thing. Ryan and Adam. Adam and Ryan. All those years of study and... Was I ever truly a surgeon before I met them? How we clinked away with our scalpels and toy morality. Yes, we could lop a boil here and shave down a beak there, but, but could we really change anything? No, but Adam gives us the means to do it. And Ryan frees us from the phony ethics that held us back. Change your look, change your sex, change your race. So that's kind of the premise that that, ra um, that Rapture was kind of built on, is once they discovered this atom, uh, they had the, the ability to change the molecular, people down to the molecular base. Thank you. Get the jump on me and try and stick your hand out that doorway. What you thinking? Hold shift to choose the weapon menu. Just pick them off as they come in. This is surprisingly a lot easier with a mouse and keyboard. Come on. I mean, you're coming at me with a wrench. I really don't think running. You turned into a box. Okay. I really don't think running is, is necessarily a, a mockable offense.
Come on. Hey, you're just stuck that man, I'm so glad I hacked that turret. You're such a good help. Okay. So so this is kind of where we get into the idea of um the medical side of Rapture, of course, with it being the medical pavilion, we're going into there. But this is where, uh, you know, you saw that, um, saw that one girl who was like, I'm too spliced up, the ghost in the, in the ghost in the girl's bathroom. She said, I'm too spliced up and no one's going to want me. Uh, this is where that comes into play. Give me just a second. That's the beautiful work of Andrew Steinman. You'll see, you'll see why he's been going crazy. Above all, do no harm, Jay Steinman. Oh, you don't say. Okay, let's see. Try and get this quickly. Quickly now, I need a very particular piece. Okay, I have my path planned out. Okay, let's see here. Now I need upper corner. Uh, I need another elbow piece. Now I just need one that goes straight across, and then we're good. Watch me not have another one. It's right there. I'm an idiot. Boom. Okay. We, we, we missed. There's another turn in there. Oh, shit. That spooked me. So this is the part where, so this is how, how their reviver system works. You don't go back to a checkpoint, you just respawn, and everyone that you've already killed is still dead. This does kind of go against the game's kind of survivor mechanic. Because it's like, death really doesn't have much of a consequence here. Now we missed. Presents new problems for the professional. As your tools improved, so do your standards. There was a time I was happy enough to take off a wart or two, or turn a real circus freak into something you can show in the daylight. But that was then. When we took what we got, but with Adam, the flesh becomes clay. What excuse do we have not to sculpt? and sculpt and sculpt until the job is done yeah and you, this is the part where as you as you find more of these audio logs you just kind of see him going more and more crazy on the surface the parasite expects the doctor to heal them for free the vomit to feed them out of charity how little they differ from the pervert who prowls the streets looking for a victim he can ravish for his grotesque amusement. And Andrew Ryan fits into this. He's just constantly, constantly there. His political views are very niche. It's like he perfectly fits within that, that contrast of um, fascism and it, it's really weird. It's hard to describe, um, besides just being abhorrent and in nature. Um, I am beautiful, yes. Look at me. What could I do to make my features finer? With Adam and my scalpel, I have been transformed. But is there not something better? What if now it is not my skill that fails me? 
See, this is the part where he starts... You know, the more of these we find of him, the more along his journey into madness we will see. I was at German prison camp, only a 16 years old, when I realized I have love for science. German doctor, he make experiment. Sometimes he makes scientific error. I tell him of this error, and this make him angry. But then he asks, how can a child know such a thing? Chloe. I tell him sometimes, I just know. He screams at me, then why tell me? Well, I said, if you are going to do such things, at least you should do them properly. Tenenbaum is a very interesting character, to say the least. Uh, a Jewish woman who survived Nazi camps and... It, she's just very. She's a very well written character. Crap, okay, that's fine. Okay, we're gonna go up now, and then we're gonna go vertical, and let's just see how many of these verticals we have to stack on here. Okay, that's enough, and then we're gonna go here, and then just pop it across this way, and we are good to go. There we go. Uh, literally all this does is just make things a little cheaper. Okay. This, whole, this game also does like a dick move of any time you buy a full amount of something, you fill yourself up, it gives you an extra one. I remember, um, I played Bioshock 2 the day it came out, and I played with, uh, with developers from the game, and someone asked why they do that, and they literally just said, because we're dicks. You know, it's funny, I actually have, I can't remember what the name of it is, but I have a fear of the deep sea. Um... And this game really doesn't trigger that. And I think the thing is, of it is, is I'm very much afraid of the vast void. See, that wasn't where, where his face popped up in the corner and, and there's an audio log. That was him actually saying that right now, currently. But what I was saying is this game really doesn't trigger that because, yeah, there's the giant whale and, like, the size difference of things always kind of freaks me out, but as well as the just the vast void that you couldn't see five feet in front of your face. And I think it's because this game does such a wonderful job of having this ocean biome, but having it feel open and, not, and vast and not like a void. <laughs> Aesthetics are a moral imperative. Why do we have two eyes? Is there some law that says we must? Two arms, two legs, two ears, two... I'm not finished! That's Simon. You'll have to find some way to get through to Sora. So now we get our second plasmid, which is telekinesis. But yeah, this game just actually does this kind of bi biome and setting you know, very well. Which is really good to hear because I normally really don't like the deep sea. It normally freaks me out, like, a lot. Thank you. Just going to continue on though. Okay, so I need to go down this way. Steinman, I know Medical Pavilion is your man. But you might want to cogitate on this. Ocean water is colder than a witch's tip. You don't heat the pipes, the pipes freeze. Pipes freeze, pipes burst. 
then wrapped your legs. Now, I realize you're a posh sort of geezer, and frankly, I don't give a toss if you piss or go fishing. But once rapture starts leaking, the old girl's never gonna stop. And then I'll be sure to tell Ryan he's got you a thank. That's another power dynamic that really goes on in... Oh, shit. Okay. So that's another power dynamic that really goes on um, when, you, when you look at Rapture and everything that's going on in here. And it explores a little bit more of this, too, in Bioshock 2. But you have to have a working class. Um, you have to have people who will do the manual labor. When Picasso became bored of painting people, he started representing them as cubes and other abstract forms. The world called him a genius. I've spent my entire surgical career creating the same tired shapes over and over again. The upturned nose, the cleft chin, the ample bosom. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I could do with a knife what that old Spaniard did with a brush? Okay. So as I was saying, you have to have a working class. Well, with with the kind of environment that they were building up in Rapture, about everyone being the elite and the great, uh, of course you're going to have that. Of course you're going to have that power dynamic, and you're going to have that elitism that comes with a city built on that power dynamic. So, so then you have people who are like, who know better when it comes to systems like how to make Rapture survive in the sense, physically, how to prevent the city from sinking in the bottom of the ocean. And then you have all these posh people who think they know better because they are better. And another, there, there's a ton of reasons why Rapture could never have worked. And that's one of them. Another thing I really like to do when I'm hacking is I like to try and give it as many of these macaroni elbows as I can because if you can do that it takes longer for it to go through corners than it does a straight a straight curve okay so now that we have the camera fixed I think I'm early I don't think I need to be here uh, no I do I need to get incinerate but uh, you just have that unhealthy work dynamic, and I can't remember the name of the guy who just did that audio about, you know, look, I don't care if your uh, ocean water is colder than witch's tip. Uh, that guy. Um, he is, like, one of the top mechanics for keeping Rapture, I don't want to say afloat, because it's kind of the opposite, but, um... She didn't fit in any way. I don't care. He's kind of responsible for keeping Rapture... Uh, alive. Okay. Parasite wanders the halls. We rebuild our city in the doubts and the pride to spoil our own. One thousand atoms to the man or woman who pins its weak. Hold off. Then what's stopping us from breathing that in? Hmm. Has hit 
You're, you're gonna hear that terminology a lot. Um, you're gonna hear that terminology a lot. Ryan's whole philosophical debate and political mindset come from the dynamic of the parasite and the honest man. And of course, to Ryan, the parasite is anybody who disagrees with him. And so, okay, hi. So, so of course, to Ryan, the parasite is anybody who disagrees with him. And um, you can kind of see how that that kind of eventually, as he rewards people who believe his philosophical and political view. This is also where we start to get into the mob mentality that comes with where the splicers are today. And, um, just again, so many reasons why Rapture couldn't work. Andrew Ryan, the, ironically, Andrew Ryan being the main one. He just did not handle the city that well. Which is ironic because it was his own creation to begin with. Ooh, buckshot. We're gonna be getting a shotgun soon. I see it. I just wanna try and loot this first. Okay, 0451. Enter code. Oh. Done. It just kind of gets us some more supplies here and there. Now, the moment where we get the shotgun is actually a really cool moment in this game. This game has some very cinematic moments, as you've already seen. Um, yeah, but yeah, this game already has some very cinematic moments. You know, being able to get headshots so much better do make certain moments like that a little bit anticlimactic. But anyway, very cinematic moments, very... It's just a good game. I just love this game. Okay, now we just gotta head back to where we were. There we go. This is the new one-two combo that I like a lot better. All right. I um, think now we just need to head back downstairs and get this one bigger, like, frozen area. Thank you. Okay. Oh shit. I don't think I need to be here just yet. I'm going to very quickly get out of here because there was a there's a rocket turret. Oh, remember that moment where I talked about getting the getting the grenade, uh, getting the shotgun. This is that moment.
just moments like that are just so amazing. It's just so cool. I just I love this game, just because it it it, it just makes you feel like you're a part of this in such a unique way. Just such a bold and different way. At the German prison camp, they put me to work on genetic experiments on other prisoners. They call me Das Wunderkind, the Wonder Child. Germans. All they can talk about is blue eyes and the shape of forehead. All I care about is, why is this one born strong and that one weak? This one smart, that one stupid. All that killing. You think the Germans could have been interested in something useful? Okay. So this is where we get telekinesis. Chong is also going to be a name that we are very familiar with. Throw objects at foes. You can even catch grenades and throw them back. You know, it's very weird, so it makes sense. It makes sense for us that they would be advertising these to be like, you can throw grenades back at your enemies. But it, it makes it doesn't make much sense that that would be how they they advertise this. There's that. So it it doesn't make sense that they'd advertise these as set your foes ablaze. Careful, fire spreads, and. Um, Safes are always so much freaking harder. Shoo! Sorry. Safes are a lot harder than anything else in this game to hack. Which, rightfully so. I mean, it's kind of the whole point of the save. Okay, that door's locked. And this is why they have a rocket turret there instead of a RPG turret. Or not what I mean, you know what I mean. There are certain performances in this game that have always stuck with me. 
that audio trot, that audio tape was one of them. Just that whole, that whole like chaotic hunger between symmetry, dear Steinman. It's time we taught the people about symmetry. It was always so chilling. And then there's another one we're gonna see at some point. Um, the Iceman Cometh. And that one has always been another one that's really just kind of stuck with me in the sense that it's so chilling. This is such... This game honestly did top notch when it came to casting and acting. And just in general, the performance of this game is so good. Okay. Let's see what all we can do here. There we go. There was a dude here. Where'd he go? So that's what it's like when you get caught by the security cameras. They're very intimidating. So I'm also, yeah. So I've been doing the bird to kind of symbolize when visual triggers will be coming through. Uh, I think what I'm also going to try and do is when there's audio ones, I will give you a cue down at the bottom, kind of giving you a trigger warning of what all it's going to be talking about. Like, for example, Tenenbaums uh, talks a lot about her time in a German prison camp, which might not be very... I don't want to say welcoming, but not, might not be a very open subject that some people want to hear about. So I'll put a trigger warning of it down there, and as long as that trigger warning is down there, um, that subject is being talked about, so this way you can mute it, uh, and then unmute it whenever you, whenever that trigger warning is gone. And of course, like I did last time, I know I'm mentioning this near the end of the video, um, but I'll have this on there at the beginning. I'm just going to auto-hack that one. That one's very difficult. No, it's just to the same hallway. All right. All right. Well, here we are. Right on the other side of this door is Dr. Simon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I've run out of time. This is as far as I can get in this episode. So uh, come see me next time where I take on the Mad Doctor. Thank you so much for watching. Again, this has been one of my favorite game series. I'm so excited to be able to bring this to you. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, come see me again next time. Just make sure you go the way the crow flies.